Hi, it's Dr. Jeff Pierce with Michigan Sports and Spine, week 11. So we're pretty excited. We we're into double digits, the beautiful 11th week. Um, we have gotten bored with Dr. Pierce. So we're bringing in our new doctor, Dr. Michael Bonet, from just finishing up fresh off his fellowship from Payne Fellowship at University of Michigan. So he, we're excited. I mean, I, I talked about it last week. He's excited. He's a little nervous, so go easy on him. Um, but to be honest, I've interviewed a lot of people. I've trained a lot of people over the years. He brings a special, you know, does he have the X factor? He might have a little bit of the X factor, but he definitely brings something. We're not going to hold the Michigan thing against him right now. But to be honest and a sincere note, he's been working with me for about three weeks getting prepped, or three months getting prepped and ready. And I know he's excited, he has a lot of thoughts, and, and for me, it's, it's a challenge to me also, like I said last week, that I want someone who is cutting edge, we pride ourselves in Michigan Sports and Spine, that we're staying on top, we're, we're, we're definitely, a, you know, what today's medicine's about. He's gonna bring a great other perspective and aspect to the, the practice. So, you know, Dr. Bonnet, I mean, you had a lot of choices to go to a lot of places, you were, you know, I'm not going to say you were highly sought after, but you were, you know, you have a great credentials, your resume speaks for itself, and finishing up at U of M for Payne Fellowship, I mean, you've really learned some of the new stuff. So, really, I mean, are you excited to come, or are you just like, this is the best job that got, got to you? No, I, I'm really excited to uh, join the team here, excited to join the practice, uh, really focus on, you know, treating patients as a whole as the practice has always done, you know, really getting a comprehensive evaluation, uh, finding the primary source of pain for the patient, and then finding the best strategy to address the pain. You know, my, my focus has always been on improving um, patient's quality of life and increasing function. So, you know, finding the best way to do that and be that some new technologies that I can bring to the practice that I really focus on such as you know radio frequency ablation procedures for the neck, back, knees, um, as well as some spinal cord stimulation and peripheral nerve stimulation, which I'm really excited to get going here. So, so like I, you know, I kind of shied away from the the pain stimulators because back when I trained, they were a little bit more archaic. Mm -hmm. The the advancements are are you know great. They're not as inconvenienced. They're they're you know, multiples channel so you can mm -hmm. adjust it on the fly it's not yeah. a one time and you're stuck so you know being in your fellowship you were able to do a lot of that also oh yeah we definitely got exposure to that and I mean there's all sorts of devices out here now the last five to ten years has been really exciting in that field where you know there's new technologies everyone thinks about it in the past as if you just feel this buzzing sensation in your back or your leg and it just masks the pain which is not really the best way to approach it and we've realized that with all the technology that's been developed recently there's a lot of, like I said, new devices out there where you don't even feel anything in your back or, you know, you don't even have a device in your back. It's just all, you know, remote and through signals through your body. So you don't even have to have surgery. So, so there's even a Bluetooth model. Yeah. I mean, you can control things via your phone and, um, you know, they're getting to the point where, you know, they're MRI compatible. So it doesn't limit you in the future. So there's, there's lots of great stuff out there that I'm ha happy and excited to bring to the yeah. table here. Another thing I mentioned I think last week is that I, I deal with headaches but I don't deal with headaches at, at the level we've done a lot of referring out so a lot a lot of my patients a lot of people listening today have had headaches and things like that so you know I know you have a, a little bit more comfort or excitement mm -hmm. for treating headaches. Yeah I think that you know it, it, it all depends on what type of headache there is based on the treatment option you know a lot of patients end up getting on you know medications long term and they're taking this for years and you know all medications have side effects and we want to try and avoid that as much as possible so there's definitely some treatment options from a injection standpoint that can help you know limit these free the frequency and the severity of uh, headaches and I'm excited to kind of start seeing those patients as well so I mean you're taking on patients right away you're starting middle of August yeah correct you're comfortable with pretty much everything we do and he actually has a little bit more patience, so it reminds me of my early days where, you know, he's willing to do a lot more uh, with some patients I might not want to have the uh, patience for. So, um, you're available. Oh yeah, I'm starting August. Starting August, August uh, mid August, I'm going to be in the clinic. I'm going to be seeing patients uh, both virtually and in person here. Starting doing procedures for people. So really, uh, 
trying to be available at any time for patients, yeah. So, and the other big thing is we're, we've expanded, which I don't know if everybody knows, we've expanded down to wind out with Dr. Abrahamson. So mm -hmm. you're gonna be helping her out. We're kind of bringing a whole engagement marriage thing together too. So you're our bridge <laughs> between the two practices. So you're gonna be available there right that same week to be seeing people. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm really excited about that as well. Being able to be available pretty much throughout the entire Metro Detroit area. Um, you know, at Troy, Livonia, and down in Wyandotte, and I'll be able to see patients there. And Dr. Abrahamson's great. Uh, I've loved uh, my experiences with her so far as well. So yeah, no, she's a, <laughs> she's probably a, she's a bigger rock star. <laughs> she's uh, she does a lot, and she she lives it. So that's what's cool about her. And we talked about her before about the peptides. So again, you're well trained with the musculoskeletal ultrasound. You're comfortable with the regenerative medicine. Dr. Abrahamson obviously is done this peptide, which uh, I think she completes her course next month yeah. to be one of the masterminds in that. So, you know, I, I think overall with Sports and Spying, we've talked about being an integrative team and, you know, we don't necessarily, we overlap a lot, but we also have the same philosophy, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, no, that, I mean, that's really what drew me to joining this practice was, you know, that comprehensive evaluation, finding that primary source of pain, really focus on lifestyle, you know, modifications, rehabilitation at the core of all treatment plans. So really, I mean, you're at U of M, you did, just so people know, you did more of an anesthesia fellowship, mm -hmm. and it differs a little bit. So I've always said in my training, um, especially from residency on, that you learn something from everybody, good, oh, yeah. good and bad. So you, you worked with the anesthesiologist, so you mm -hmm. got to see the other side, so you can kind of work at a different level, like the philosophy here. Yeah. No, it, it, I really appreciate that part of my training where uh, at Wash, Washington University in St. Louis, I got a really strong PM&R training there, and then I got to spend a year with the anesthesia group at uh, U of M, uh, and, you know, they're, they're great. And they, you know, the philosophies are, you know, slightly different, but really treatment of the patient and best uh, quality of care is really at the core of it all. So, so you've got to admit, when, I, when you hired on, um, you knew I did a lot of things, like I've been on the radio and I do all this stuff, and we didn't we didn't anticipate this. We didn't anticipate that we're gonna be doing telemedicine. Both of us are gonna be for you know at the beginning gonna be here on Facebook Live, which oh, yeah. Nicole is promoting and Instagram and all that. So are you are you ready for this social media buzz? Oh yeah, no, I feel like the new uh, the, this is the new world. The telemedicine and uh, virtual care is you know a huge component of it to try and keep everyone safe and it frankly it creates better access for patients and more availability which I, I find great and we can have opportunities like this where we can communicate directly to patients which I'm real excited to be a part of. So that's a great lead-in since I get questions every week and I have a bunch here and you took up our first seven and a half minutes so you get to answer the first question. What are your thoughts on PRP, Dr. Bonat? Uh, so PRP is a great treatment option. Um, it's really exciting to see the regenerative field in, in reality just kind of exploding at this time. You know, the, the research behind it is ever expanding and different uh, targets for therapy. And it really, really helps, you know, that regenerative, that natural healing process that it encourages. And that's that's the big thing for me. It's like there are very few side effects from it. It's you know you're using tissue from your own body, your your own cells to help regenerate, you know your joints, your tendons, your ligaments to really uh, optimize and improve improve your function. So the big thing is everybody know anybody who knows me knows I'm a Spartan. I'm a go, go green, go white. But I will admit that U of M um, and maybe you came across this. With the PRP and the regenerative medicine, they're one of the first universities to allow their their collegiate players to be utilized for mm -hmm. PRP and stem cell. And a lot of the early research came out and proved some of the the protocols that we're using now. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting that you know we we have been cutting edge. We are cutting edge. You've trained at a facility that is, is a believer in it. Um, so really, just to back up a second, the platelet rich plasma for people that. Are, are new to our program um, is pl uh, uh, platelet rich plasma comes from your blood. So again, real simple, we draw it down from your blood, uh, we spin down the healing properties and then we re-inject at a higher concentration to the injured area. Neck, shoulders, hips, all the joints and all the soft tissues has shown very promising. What's exciting now, which especially with Michigan Sports and Spine, 
there's a lot of research coming out with the spine. So we're looking at the small ligaments, which people may not realize that there's small ligaments between each segment in the vertebral body. So when we took out our little spine here, so again, we start with, you know, this is the front, this is the back, this is the bone, these are the discs, and these are the nerves, and of course, these are the joints. What happens at every level, you're seeing small ligaments, and we have those whiplash injuries or old, you know, injuries that we would call a shearing injury, will cause small micro injuries that respond real well to the PRP and stem cell. There's a lot of people, especially I talked about this before out in Utah, that are doing a lot of work with the disc itself. Um, I'm not 100% comfortable about the disc, but there's a lot of research coming, not that we're on the, you know, the leading edge of it, but we're definitely keeping a close eye on it. But we're seeing a lot of results, especially in the cervical spine and the lumbar spine, where we're tightening up these ligaments and creating more of a, of a, a regenerative uh, healing process instead of just putting steroid in there where it can necessarily deteriorate the, the ligament a little bit. Um, so yeah, so you did pretty good on the first one. You want another one? Sure. <laughs> so it says, what service slash treatments are you most excited for this new physician to bring to your practice? So I guess this is a question for me about you. <laughs> How do you think he will change Michigan sports and spine? So, I guess you, we, we can answer and then you can agree or disagree. So, to be honest, you know, I've been in practice for 20 plus years, and I can't believe I say that I'm 20 years ahead of Dr. Bonat, but I don't feel it. I feel like I've always kept up with the research, I've always kept up with what's going on new, and now with him coming in, I made a, a funny comment last week that the good news is I don't think I'm that far off. <laughs> You've seen me in action, you've been with me injecting. Um, Am I that far off from what's currently being done? <laughs> no, not at all. I think that, you know, you do a lot of the, you know, standard of care that, you know, you expect from a provider who works with the spine and does interventional procedures. So I, th I think that, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm, you know, coming in and taking anything that, you know, you're not doing necessarily and doing wrong, but I think that what I'm gonna be able to do is just offer different services and different treatment options so we can expand what we can offer here as a practice. Because, you know, there are only so many things you can focus on and I'll, I'll hopefully be able to focus on some different things so we can help treat patients together and work as a team. Yeah, no, I, I, that's what is exciting. So. The things that we're most excited about is the headaches, because to be honest, I don't like headaches. I mean, we keep bringing that up. But it's also around the knee. There's, there's a procedure we do around the knee for people who can't get surgery or have surgery for certain reasons that will take the, the, the pain away, similar to what we call the radio frequency. There's a technique that way. There's new procedures for the spine, for the SI joints mm -hmm. that we're looking at together, and uh, we're gonna be bringing that to the patients. Again, the main focus for us in the main philosophy we've been for many years from the day I started as a non-surgical, non-narcotic, and really get down to the root of the problem. I just talked to a patient um, actually last week that they were maybe diagnosed correctly or not correctly. Um, and I didn't want to throw anybody under the bus, but it was missed. It, you can't just throw out the, the word low back pain. You have to tease it down. It's okay for documentation, but you've got to make sure that the physician understands the depths of what's going on. And a lot of patients will, will say this, you don't understand my pain, you don't understand what I'm going through. Um, that's not necessarily true. I mean, we've been around for 20 plus years. I've seen a lot of situations. I've seen a lot of people make excuses. And it's funny, I, I talked about my back and my issues because that was a question. Dr. Abrahamson, she'll probably shoot me after this, but she's got a similar thing where she has two blown discs too. And we're both of the same, same philosophy that we don't like to hear excuses. Um, you know, even if it's, you're terrible, I, I deal with, you know, our charities, Athletes Unlimited, we deal with people with spinal cord injury, we deal with people with lost limbs. I mean, we just want people to be successful. It's for us to educate you and get you through it, but you have to have the motivation to do it. And I just had, today on telemedicine, same thing. You know, the individual is worried about his knee. But he, he built confidence. He's like, I trust you to do this, and, I, and I'm ready to start. Even though he's been told from five other physicians, right now I can say he's going to start, but the proof is in the pudding. You know, I'm not going to sit here, like I end my dictations. It's not like I'm going to make you 100%. I don't make you 20, 20 years old and, 
you know, invincible. You're 50, 60 years old, but sometimes with a mentality of a 20 year old, but you've got to be realistic. We, we, you have to educate you on what you should be expecting. So, I mean, that's, that's great. I think that's going to be passed on. And I know, you know, Dr. Onet's new, but he has that same background philosophy of what Dr. Abrahamson and I have been promoting her. I'm a little bit older than her, so I'm, I've got a little bit more experience, but she definitely, you know, the whole practice is bringing that, that non-surgical, non-narcotic, no excuse kind of treatment program, which is gonna get you. When you start making excuses, it leads certain doctors to say, well, here's a pill. This is what's gonna solve it. To be honest, in the long run, when I go, what's your five-year plan? You know, hopefully your five-year plan doesn't include all the medication that you're on. So, you know, sometimes certain doctors are creating the problem, but hopefully, you know, I've, I've said it more than once to patients, I'm here to educate you on it, and you have to make the decision, and you have to do the work. We can just guide you. So I think that answers that question with a little bit of a side note. So the next question is, it says you treat chronic headaches. What do you do for this? What, what's your approach? So I think this is a perfect question for you. <laughs> I've been yeah. setting you up the whole 15 oh, yeah. minutes for this. No, I, I mean, I, it, all, it always comes back down to what's the primary source of the pain. You know, if, if you've had some sort of traumatic injury where you've had whiplash and caused, you know, damage to the joints in the back, it can really radiate into the back of the head there and cause pain that's insufferable. Um, if, you know, you have kind of some nerve damage to some of the nerves coming up there uh, in your the back of your head, or if you have migraines, you know, that... Those, these, these conditions, you know, are happen from either trauma or some sort of uh, injury and, you know, determining what the source is is the primary aspect there and that, you know, there are different treatment plans. If, you know, you're suffering from migraines, Botox is a great option, you know, you can um, look, look down that route. If, you know, it's more from the occipital area or back of the head area or neck, you can treat the nerves coming up there with either you know, ablation procedures, different injections, different stimulation techniques. So I, it, it, there's really, you know, a whole wide variety of treatment options for people. So yeah, the Botox is probably the biggest thing and the other medications that you're using. And you talk about blood flow, you talk about, you know, obviously we're gonna rule out there's any serious pathology. Yeah. Um, so it gets down to the work workup. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, you, you touched on something that I do a lot, it's like cervical cervical, where the skull comes into the spinal cord um, in the back of the head, causes a lot of what we call tension headaches, musculoskeletal headaches, and we've done a lot, we do a lot of therapy to reduce that. Where other doctors are going to be like, they're feeding you medications where they're not actually treating the, the real source. Mm -hmm. So when we look at that from a mechanical, uh, you know, uh, viewpoint, there is a mechanical change, there's a shearing, like you said before, with the whiplash that can set it off. And when that thing's out of alignment and the muscles get spasm, there's that whole tension type of headache versus the migraine headache versus um, other type of headaches where Botox is definitely has been proven over the years to be beneficial for that. So there is treatment. Um, he has more patience with it, and I, I think that's going to be a great asset. Uh, so the next question. It says, I've received two rounds of injections before, and they worked for a couple months, then the pain came back. What do each of you suggest for the, for the next time? Um, do you want me to start this? Uh, you, can, you can go with this one first. Yeah. All right, you can just fill in the, my blanks. Um, so, so basically, this is not an uncommon issue. The, the thing you need to realize is when we're doing injections, there's multiple reasons for the, for the spine to be you know, to have a problem. Is it mechanical back pain? Is it nerve pain? Is it radicular pain? So it all gets down to what's going on with the nerves. So again, if we talk about the spine, again, this is the front, this is the bony part, this is the disc, and this is where the nerve comes out. So this is where most of the issues happen. So if this nerve is being compromised by a bony difference, when we do the injections, we do not change the bone. So a lot of times you can have what we call an osteophyte, or what Perry Paul just says, arthritis, there's a change here at the opening, the foramen. So when that area gets compromised by either the disc, which we can calm down, or the collapsing of the bones, or the shifting of the bones, we can kind of help with that. When it's went from a bone spur, from arthritic changes in this opening, then it's hard to change that. What we do is we try to calm everything down, meaning the inflammation. If you think of it like I always use a hot steel poker. 
So if you heat up the steel, it gets hot, red, and swollen, and you throw it in the water and it kind of resets. Same thing with the nerve. When the nerve's irritable and you're feeling it down the arm and stuff like that, think of it's like a hot, irritable, and inflamed. What we do with the steroids, we drop medication right on that area, we calm that area down, and hopefully it lives in that smaller environment. And sometimes what's going on here is you're getting it, what I'm imagining, is you're getting a couple weeks, two months, three months of relief, and then that bony spur, whatever it's doing on, is compromising the nerve and re-irritates it. The other thing that could be going on is if you're someone who works like a dentist or a front office girl where you're always leaning to one side, you're always moving to one side, you're creating an irritation to the nerve again also. So the biggest thing you need to do is make sure, one, is it bony related, and two, is it a repetitive thing that you continue to, do to continue to aggravate it. So you probably need to be assessed uh, to make sure we're changing your environment. The last thing, like I have a friend of mine I'm supposed to inject this week, and I'm sure he's not listening, so we'll talk about him, but he's somewhat of just that. He thinks I'm going to inject him, he's not going to change his environment, and he thinks everything's going to be fine. And I promise him that it will reoccur if he do not change his, his real environment. So we have to, again, Dr. Bonet said it, I've said it, you have to change from a holistic standpoint, you have to change the environment of what you, because that's what most likely got you there, especially if it's something that happens over a period of time. So with this, we would like to see you before the next injection. It may be doing the injection, being very aggressive with the therapy and changing your environment may be the cause. If it is surgical, then we may need to talk to a surgeon to kind of just cut that area out or thin out the, the, the bone spur out. Did I miss anything? No, I think that that's, that's pretty much what I was thinking and going to say. Uh, you said it, obvious, more eloquently than I would have. But no, I think one of the biggest things is not only the injection, but what you're doing after the injection. I think that, you know, that's where we get into trouble is that, you know, you start feeling good after the injection, then you go back to kind of what you were doing in the past. And that's why you had the nerve irritation in the first place. So really taking advantage of the time that the injection helps and, you know, working on making those changes to either your posture, your environment, whatever that may be, or uh, whatever lifestyle changes you need to make to kind of optimize optimize your your recovery. So the big thing, I mean, you came from more of an anesthesia pain. You know, we, we talk about we are not a pain clinic. We're an mm -hmm. aggressive spine care center. And part of that is, is that we do take on the holistic. We're not just, we, everybody can hit, you know, after a few years can put a needle anywhere. It's about the program that you set forth from there. It's what you employ to the, to the patient um, to make them change, make them educated. To sit there and inject and go, that's where you lead to unnecessary surgery, I truly believe. Mm -hmm. And I think you've seen that some of the pain clinics where it's just, they inject, they move on, there's not a whole program set in place, and they're kind of, you know, six weeks later in the same place, kind of mm -hmm. similar to this question. Mm -hmm. So to end with, uh, the last question is, are you having your golf outing this year? So yes, we are. Uh, for those who know me closely or don't know, you can research. There's a, a charity that we have. It's called Athletes Unlimited. I started 24 years ago. I can't believe that. Um, but we do a charity golf outing every year. Obviously, there's changes. Um, it's going to be August 10th. I encourage everybody to donate or help out. And we are looking forward to as many players as possible. We're not putting the pressure on because we understand with COVID, everything else going on in the world, um, it may not be top on your priority, but believe me, we've helped so many impaired individuals for wheelchairs, for prosthetics, for all their needs, for sports needs, for their outlet, for their social outlet. Um, so we understand everybody's a little bit concerned and worried, but we still have to raise money for this charity, which I feel, I mean, I'm obviously biased, I'm um, very personally, you know, my whole staff, we, we need to raise money. We, we raise a good amount of money each year from the golf fighting. This year we're going to fall short. So for those who know about it or know people, we're going to be calling every one of you and ask you to make a donation this year. We're coming out with actually custom masks, Michigan Sports and Spine with Athletes Unlimited, uh, masks that will be on sale for donations. Uh, so that's going to be our biggest way of raising money this year. So again, the golf outing will be happening. It won't be in the form that we've had it. We've been rated as one of the top golf outings year after year from people that go to tons of golf outings and we've always, it's probably because of the purpose of it and also our volunteers that 
help out on a daily basis. So big shout out, Dr. Bonet's going to be starting. He's available to start seeing patients. You can call the office to make an appointment. Uh, for patients that see me and don't want to see me anymore, Dr. Bonet's available for that also. Uh, but I think the compliment of both of us is great. And I know he has the same philosophy. We both talk about what socially is going on right now. And we, uh, we truly judge people on their soul and we're trying to make everybody better in this uh, overall better place to be. And for you, a more pain-free lifestyle. So peace out. We'll talk to you. And Dr. Bonet's going to start doing this on his own. <laughs> Take care.